Um, Washington has, uh, you know, a tremendous innovation economy. So there are many different entities from the industry associations I was mentioning to the Washington Research Foundation, which is our partner um, in many of our, our um, programs. Um, the Tech Alliance is our partner in a new innovation showcase. Uh, I don't know if anyone has talked today about the Alliance of Angels, uh, an organization of angel investors that's just run as tightly as a ship. It's a really admirable organization. And uh, last year, I think, um, we invested $8 million in startups. It's a, a, a monthly luncheon. And so with the Tech, it's, it's run by the Tech Alliance. And so um, this uh, last year, we started an innovation showcase, which instead of showcasing startup companies, showcases very promising um, later stage technologies which would be eligible to start companies around in the hopes of attracting investors. And we invite much the same uh, type of participant to, to attend that. Um, let's, uh, and the MIT Forum and you know, the Northwest Entrepreneur Network, there's just a lot of resources for helping people get connected to the right service providers, lawyers, accountants, potential uh, CFOs, et cetera. So um, well, the, the great promise, you know, the, the thing that has us all so excited is, is, is that big number, more than a billion dollars a year in, uh, in research. And I, I, I put in rough order the departments and parts of the university that generate uh, the greatest number of disclosures <laughs> and inventions each year, although uh, I think uh, it's always important to remember that um, not every patent and invention is created equal. And that's one of the reasons this is a big hit, a big hit business. Our office is funded by royalties. So we're, we're not funded by the state. We're lucky enough, like um, many large technology transfer offices, to be funded by the royalties that, uh, a fraction of the royalties that um, are produced by both our, our more recent um, licenses and also the big hit that I mentioned. Uh, and so um, that funds a, a very large office. You know, the size of a technology transfer office is usually commensurate with the breadth of the research enterprise because if you think about it, you need to have experts in almost every area of inquiry from um, monocoidal antibodies to algorithms. And so uh, we have an office that's nearly 60 people. We have about 20 technology managers, uh, all of whom have a PhD in a high demand area, an MBA, a JD, or both alongside that. Uh, patent agents, uh, also with PhDs in both life sciences and, and engineering subject matter, SBIR grant writers, and veteran chief medical officers and, and CEOs and venture capitalists who are working uh, with the programs that have to do with starting companies versus, versus licensing. Um, we're not only the largest commercialization force in the state, we're probably one of the largest commercialization offices in the country, probably tied with Wharf and maybe Johns Hopkins, and that's because the University of Washington is America's premier public research university. We have more NIH-funded research than any university in the country, and more um, federally funded research than, on, on the whole, than any federally funded uh, university other than Johns Hopkins. But I would like to point out that they cheat, because they say cheats because they have a half a billion dollar year over year, every year guaranteed contract with the, D, with, with the, defense, uh, the Department of Defense. So I would like to point out that in terms of actual year-over-year -year, you know, newly won grants, we are number one. So, um, that, so, so therefore, I would, I'll say that we are America's premier public research university. Uh, we have a tremendous uh, amount by dollar volume of research going on here, and so we have to have a very, very large office. Um, and that, that scale lets us do a lot of things. It lets us have a lot of different kinds of expertise um, to, uh, to apply to the task at hand. So how do we compare? You know, there are a number of hotspots around this country um, for technology innovation. Uh, Massachusetts, uh, New, the New York and, and Philadelphia region, Texas, and California, notably. Uh, so the Kaufman Foundation, using uh, um, a very complicated algorithm with all sorts of uh, quotients and criteria, calculates um, every year um, a ranking in the new economy for what kind of innovation ecosystem we have. And uh, this year we're number two, second only to Massachusetts with its tremendous biotech uh, 
uh, infrastructure. Uh, and we're number one in the number of licenses for $1 million of research. But here is where I will caution you that the metrics around tech transfer, since this is an economics uh, focused meeting, um, make it a very difficult thing to measure because just as every license, every patent isn't created equal, every license isn't created e equal either, right? I think there are plenty of universities or states that would have been happy to trade 10 licenses for something for the Google license that Stanford had. But at any rate, we're, we're, we're doing well by, by some, some measures. And we want to do better. So we're looking around the country and trying to plagiarize the best practices. You know, the University of Utah um, is really our gold standard right now when it comes to startups. About five or six years ago, uh, their administration also uh, put in a change agent. They replaced their technology transfer uh, leader with someone who had been the dean of the business school. And he had a very irreverent um, and modern view of what was possible. And I think at the time they had about eight or nine startups every year. They have about $390 million annually in research going on there. And to be fair to us, uh, you know, a very profit um, supportive culture in, in, uh, in Utah. But today, in the last three years, they've had 21, 23, and 22 startups each year. And in the five years that they've had their new leader in place, they've had 90 startups and only six have failed. And they have generated tens of millions of dollars already in state taxes that have been paid into the state. And they are now second overnight in just those five years to MIT in startup for research dollars. So an incredibly um, impressive change and a very quick one and one that we're trying to think about how we can emulate. And um, I, it, it's been very interesting to see the extent to which the Utah State Legislature has come to look at the university in a, in a very, very different way. Uh, the Desponde Center at MIT, I think, is um, a leader in creating the right kind of entrepreneurial culture. They don't worry about licensing. In fact, they're not a license office. There's another technology transfer office that's the other part of campus that handles licenses. They have the many resources that we have to help faculty researchers start companies, um, market researchers and folks with domain expertise, and they don't worry about a license. They ask everyone to do the right thing and to give 5% equity in the startup to the university just because, to just acknowledge that without the platform of the university, this wouldn't be happening. And I think um, it's a very exciting idea, and it's one of the reasons we changed our name to the Center for Commercialization, because we want to make it really clear that unlike transfer offices, we're not entirely IP focused. There are many wonderful ideas that come out of faculty brains and postdoc and graduate uh, student brains that just happen not to have an aspect to them that can be crystallized and protected legally with traditional intellectual property measures. There st still may be barriers to entry, such that it's a great uh, innovation to start a company around. Sometimes the, the barrier to entry can be uh, as simple as we have three of the four people in the entire universe who understand how to do this. <laughs> and um, it's a, a, a novel kind of barrier that universities tend to have. Uh, one of the um, points that I wish our state legislators who were so impressed by that map um, understood is that for every dot on that map, which is a formal tech transfer company that came out of UW, in other words, there was a license, uh, there were probably at least five companies that were started around a great idea that came out of the university for which there wasn't a license because there wasn't something to patent. My most successful company um, isn't on that map. It, 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 my, I co-founded it with two University of Washington computer science professors, but there wasn't anything that needed to be protected and therefore we didn't have to get a license. Uh, we absolutely owe the fact that we were able to create the company and to the fact that we were all here together only because of the existence of this university. And so the economic development impact of the university goes far beyond what's actually able to be listed there.